Welcome in to another film breakdown here on the O-Line Committee where uh, we sit down with two former NFL offensive linemen, 16 plus years of trenches experience, and we sit under the learning tree with Alex Boone and Jeremiah Searles. And you guys, so in a recent O-Line Committee podcast episode, you guys ranked your top 10 best offensive lines in the league, and you both had the Chiefs in your top 10, pretty high up. Some changes on the offensive line, but... We talk so much about Patrick Mahomes and the brilliance, and he's the greatest quarterback of all time, and those things are all true. And Travis Kelsey, I feel like not enough people talk about the great job that the Chiefs' offensive line does up front in pass protection. So let's talk about it today, gentlemen. Yeah, I agree with you, and I think that a lot of people kind of overlook their interior players because Patrick Mahomes is so good at creating space and getting away from defenders, and he's one of these guys that always knows where his outlets are going to be, and he can make the miraculous throws. So it's kind of like you're going to get overshadowed. And I'll give you the best example. At times, Tom Brady's offensive line was like, well, Tom's just Tom, and he can throw the ball. And I was like, well, they're really good at times, right? Like you, they're, they're really good. If you give them a chance, they can still do things, and it's the combination of them holding up blocks and helping Patrick to get out that allows him to have the success that he does. And at the same time, the Isaiah Pacheco runs lately have just been so fucking badass that if they can continue that run game, like I don't know how Jay sees them. I've always seen KC as more of a pass pro team. Like mm. Everyone's kind of – Either or in my mind, right? You're either pass pro team or you're a run blocking team. If they can start to make themselves more of a both where we can run the ball and we can have Patrick come back here, they're going to hit a whole new level of elite that we haven't even seen yet. And that's what I think is so cool about this team and this offensive line. At the same time, their tackle play has to be better. Yeah, you know, and I think everything can be built off the interior, right? Trey Smith, Joe Tooney, Creed Humphrey, yeah. right? Everything's built off the interior because this team is built – to have Patrick be able to run around in the back, but know that he can step up at any moment, right? Like the crazy stuff that Patrick does when he can escape out of the pocket is what makes him so special. But what really elevated his game is you have to decide as a defensive coordinator, am I blitzing up the middle to try and get in his face or am I playing coverage and allowing Creed and Trey to have a double team and single up Joe Tooney, right? Those are the decisions you have to make because – you can't just let him sit back there. Right? Right. You have to try and mix things up and look around. But the way they built this team from the interior out, I think was a brilliant job by old Andy Reid there. Well, uh, well, let's take a look at – uh, we'll call. start with this here. Early in the season, this is, I believe, week five against the Vikings. This was a third and 18 with the Chiefs backed up hey now. inside their own 20-yard line. <laughs> and right, this is one of those decision moments. Yeah, Seven for the out. defense, do you, do, do you do. bring the house and gamble, which the Vikings did more than any team in the league last year? Let's roll the tape and see what happens here. By the All way, right. I'm three, curious. Is three by somebody, one set. Is there somebody deeper? Or is, no, that's it. All right. All right. So, th- oh. Yeah, it's brutal, mm, dude. Cameron Brait. Right, so they go three up here. Go back. This is actually an ME <clears throat> by the right tackle. Right, so they go three up here. They say, hey, we're going to push to the left. We're going to identify 58's our point. So we're going to go three for three, 58, zero, and 98. Right, we're going to lock those three up. You two go big on big on the outside over here in 91, 99 on the right side. Right, you two are locked. Jarek McKinnon, you scan. 44 is your number one threat. If number one doesn't come, then you bump outside to 22. Right, that's how this should be picked up. The right tackle freaks out and slams back inside, right, leaving Daniil Hunter, not the guy you want to live alone, to get a free run at Harry at Patrick here. Right, the reason they do that, go back to the top, you leave the widest man free, which in this case would be Harrison Smith, right, over here on the left side. Yeah, Harrison. everything else you button up interiorly, you leave the widest guy free, and you make Patrick throw hot off of the safety. You don't want him to throw hot off of the right the right defensive end. Which is so also got another. Six on, you've got six on six. You have and Harrison blocked, Smith and you, is the. Yeah. He, Harrison's not supposed to be on block. 24 should chip Harry on his way out. Instead, he chips 98. So that's another. I mean, they always tell you to chip the widest rusher, right? Like not right here, like Jay said, if, we've, if this is all blocked properly, 24 gets in front of Harry just another second. He's not having to throw this ball. At the same time, this is Patrick just being Patrick. And I'm trying to think is this Blake Bell that catches it? Who catches this? Uh, Green, Watson, right? Is it Watson? I think it's is it 84. Hold yeah, on. I'll go back to the wide sure. here. I'm pretty sure it's Watson who catches this. No, it's 84. Okay. 
I'm trying to think of who that is. Is it Blake Bell, maybe? No, Blake Bell doesn't run that fast. Uh huh. I think that is Watson. I think you're right. It might be. Anyways, <laughs> um, that's just them making a great play, right? Like this, you have him right here. This should be a sack. He just throws the ball up, and on, we just make a great play. But again, play. Lo- like I talked about earlier, look where the pressure is not coming from. Interior. Right? You've got all up. All up in the middle there. You've got a one on one with Davenport with Joe Tooney on the left side. You got a one on one technically on the right side with Trey Smith and a one on one in here. And then you're saying, I- I'm betting that you'll be able to step up, right? If this thing doesn't escape, if, if 74 stays right there, he's going to be able to step up in this pocket. Yeah. Jarek McKinnon gets just enough of him there, right? The interior is where this is built. And then you should be able to escape. And then this is just Patrick Mahomes doing Patrick Mahomes things. Not even sure what the right tackle was thinking there because I always knew if it was gone or not. Like I, you know, yeah, he he, he was clearly thought like it, was it was gone. Empty. And yeah, it's he, like you know whether you're in gone or not right away. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Yeah, he should have known there. Once again, they would have been higher, but their tackles are a liability. Oh, almost got him on the false oh, cadence. Almost got right. him. Here we go. go. Motion to one by three, sliding out again. Where does he escape? Up the middle of the pocket. Right? You can collapse on the edges as long as you're stout in the middle. Right? So they got two linebackers set. This is the overload front. Right? We call this an overload front. 3D lineman to his side. 2D, two linebackers to the other and one defensive end. The defensive teams love this because it creates one-on-ones. Right? You're saying, hey, these two guys, these two linebackers, one's going to be taken by a guard. The other one's going to be taken by a running back. So that means that, hey, right tackle, you're on your own with Cleo Mack over there. Ooh, no big deal. Right, like, that's a big island. That's a big Ooh, island over there. But then they both bail, right? It looks like they both yep, bail. Yep, they both bail out. But you have right? to account for them. You both bail out. So they they push this all the way across. They said nine is going to be the running back. Six is going to be taken by the le- the right guard. So we'll go four for four on this side, and then your money on the back side over here. Right? And then they usually <laughs> run some type of game. They just straight rush this. Look at that punch by Joe Thune. Stupid. Oh, watch that. The whole thing, when we talk about throwing your hands as an offensive lineman, our whole thing is you want to stop the defender's feet, right? When you throw your hands, you need to stop his feet right there. See how his feet have stopped moving forward? You've stopped his momentum. He now has to go to a second move, right? He has to go to counter move. And if your quarterback's worth a shit in the NFL, the ball's going to be gone, Yep. right? This is such a good set, staying inside out, waiting for him. Okay, cross my face. Nope, make your decision. Bang, now you're dead. Right now you're done. Now I'll just keep widening you out here. And it's nice too when you have the center on your inside of you. You have a lot of confidence to throw your hands. You don't have to worry about it a lot. But at the same time, that could be messed up very easily. And this is just a great job of having everybody run around Patrick. I mean, he always looks so unfazed when he's throwing the ball and running through. I mean, that's how you keep him calm in the middle. I still can't get over that last one. That gone protection. <laughs> Dude thought it was gone. Dude thought it was empty. I know. I drive me nuts. Simple Emmys. So now you change it up. You go, okay, let's send five, five right? Oh, how baby. Do we, how do we get to them? Well, let's just single everyone up. All right? Let's see if someone can win a one-on-one matchup. Nope. Ball's out. Right? This is the decision you have to make. Do I blitz a linebacker and leave the middle of the field slightly exposed, or do I play coverage and let him sit back there? And that's what makes this so dangerous. But that's also what makes your offensive line know, hey, if I can get on these dudes and I see them blitzing, let's just stick them for 1.5 seconds, and then Patrick's going to find the void. Right, so now you've got okay. They're identifying to the left here. That's Murray, I believe. They're identifying left, saying Smith. Um, you're locked on seventy four. Why am I blanking on his name? It's driving me bananas. Juwan Taylor. Juwan Taylor. Thank you. You're locked on, right? And that's again just having faith and saying, hey, we're gonna be inside here again. The single hand punch by Trey Smith. Oh, it's phenomenal. So fun to watch. Phenomenal. So real quick, just for the the dumb part of the audience here, like myself. So you're so we're sliding left with the center, which means yep. that these three guys are accounting for these three defenders, right? Yep. We're accounting for the two defensive linemen, and then whoever, whoever the third else, element whoever is, else comes, right? Yep. So if that linebacker comes, he's the third element. If that linebacker bails out and they blitz someone off the edge, he becomes the third element. And then right. here, these two guys are sorting money. We're man. No, we're their money. We're man. We're the man okay. side, so we have the two D linemen and nobody else. Yep. Worry about nothing else. It's a six man protection. We don't have to worry about anything. But like that inside hand punch by Trey Smith is uh, outside hand punch is so lethal. Well, he's got him on his knee, dude. He's about to like, bend him over a bit. Again, we talk about Fucking stopping his feet, right? He takes the inside out, whack, right there. He's got to restart his feet. And now you've got him. 
right? That's just such a phenomenal job. Now, this body position here by this left tackle, not good. No. Don't like that. Mm -mm. But gets him stopped, right? <laughs> For a Boom. moment. Ball's gone. That's all it takes. You yep. just got to get him stopped when they blitz. Okay, now we decide again. Okay, we rushed five last time. That didn't work. Well, let's rush four. Let him dance. Let him do his thing. And oh, just stop. find the point hey, right here. It's so it's got it's so frustrating for a defense. It, it has to be because even when they all know the same thing, you're supposed to keep contained, keep contained, no matter what. You just can't keep some quarterbacks in the pocket. I mean, dude. Yeah, because at this point you're getting frustrated. You're like, I got to get to him. I got to get to him. So Bosa's like, all right, I finally feel like I right? have a chance. I'm so I'm gonna, close. I'm gonna. I'm right there. He's right there. I can see him. I'm gonna dip my head inside and see if I can't beat this yep. dude on around the inside. And that's all it takes is just a quick dip in, right? Like, oh, I can get there. I can get there. I can get there. Because you'll always hear defensive coach, you go in there, you better get him on the ground. Yeah, right? Because the second sense. you did that, no one has contain, right? right? And you see him spin out late like, oh, shit. And he can either run for 20 yards here or lure the defensive back in. He's smart. He's and like, bang. I don't want to take the hit. I'd rather get yeah. the stats. Do it. I love it, dude. He's so smooth. And so is their core. And this is one of the things that Jay and I – and I obviously feel like a good core can take you a lot of places. Obviously, Detroit, I feel like, has a strong, strong interior, and they have a solid tackle in Panay. But when you talk about – this just kind of reminds me of the old uh, Saints breakdown. Like, when you used to look at there, they had Carl Nix and Jahari Evans. Mm -hmm. And you talk about, like, you can win a lot of games if you have two Max solid Unger. guards. Dude, and then John Goody at, at times, and they also had Charles Leno was their tackle, and um, what's his name was their right tackle. Uh, the coach now, I'm trying to think of his name, for the Broncos. What's his name? Streif. Zach Streif. Zach Streif. Like, dude, there's a lot of ways to make up the offensive line, but when you have two solid guards that can be strong in the middle, be firm, don't give up a lot of ground, and can still block one-on-ones, you can do a lot of things offensively because you can get help to the tackles in a lot of ways. You just can't mm -hmm. get help to the guards. That's why it's so hard to find offensive plays that you – like at times they would tell the fullback, like, hey, if you can get through here, try and help the guard. And he'd be like, the who? <laughs> no chance that guy's coming through. <laughs> yeah. Right? The running yeah. backs are always taught to help the tackles. Help – hey, get out and help your tackle. I'd be like, hey, I'm right here. Can you help me? No. Like, who the fuck are you? Are you on this team? <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, oh, it's I mean terrible. I mean, so yeah, they're going again. They're working a little play action here. So you've got a single block with Trey Smith. Boom. They get through here. Donovan gets swam instantly. And no luckily, he falls down. No big deal. I'll, I'll just throw it over here. I didn't even look to but see. But look, I mean, look there. at the guys that have to win their one on ones, right? This right tackle is the money block on this play. It's the hardest. Oh, shit. Block. That tight end's doing all that work. Look at this. What do you number mean? Nine's trying, number nine's trying to keep contain on the tight end. Watch this. Yeah, because he's terrified of Mahomes getting out of the pocket. I know. So he's like, oh, God, keep widening, keep widening, keep widening, keep widening, keep widening. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't even touch The him. ball's out. Yeah, the oh. ball's out. Oh, but then up the Trey middle Smith, here. Trey I mean, Smith's Trey the only Smith. one over here doing any goddamn work. It's like, hey, I'm going to set my shoes. Boom. He's not going anywhere, right? Come to me. You want to go in there? Sweet. I got full control of your chest right there. Game Dead. over. I mean, one guy gets clean beat on that play. Clean whiff by the left tackle, right? I mean, this happens. This is an ole block, right? Ole, see It's ya. the worst. Hey, let's be honest. Yeah. It's the worst part about play action, the tackles, because they're stuck on an island by themselves, and it sucks. The good yeah, ones get And paid, they say, though. sell run. It's like, yeah, okay, you sell run against Max Crosby over there. <laughs> Dude, and tell me how I remember one time Giro yelled at Anthony Davis and I because we didn't sell run on a 359, and it was uh, Von Miller when he was young. And I was like, where Anthony Davis was like, you go fucking sell run versus him. You know how fucking hard that is? Oh, we're going, yeah, that guy's quick as shit, guys. There's no yeah, way we were selling the run down this one. You wanted to kill our quarterback oh, or not? It was, it was, oh, was it him and Jay Rat? It was him and somebody. We were like, no way we're selling the run on this. They got so mad. Mm -hmm. Here we go again. So you get into side. Nice jump set here by the left guard. Dude, look at Trey just taking on Max Crosby like but it's look no at, big deal. I mean, deal. this is what I'm talking about. Like, do look, shit. look how many one-on-ones the guards have had, right? The slide-away guard, and they haven't gotten beaten. I know we pick certain plays, but this was all year. Bang, shoots his hands, refits his hands, hop, hop, ball gone. Right? That's just a bear fight for two and a half seconds. That's all it is from the left guard. Right? That dude's right on your teeth right there. You know he's coming right down the pipe. You just got to set, throw your hands, and fight. 
And that's what he does, right? I mean, that's just, that's all pro stuff. You do that every single game, you'll be an all pro. Like as simple as that rep is, it's an incredibly hard block. So hard. what about this? What about this little twisty? That's my whole point is that right here. tackle doesn't even do anything. Trey Smith just gets fucking obliterated by Max Crosby, but he still holds in there right there. Accept it. I mean, dude, these guys are stalwarts. They're big fucking dudes. They love to use their hands. They're great with their feet. That's very rare that you can find big dudes that can move like that. I think Trey Trey might be a hundred million dollar guard. I think he he's the next agency. one. Mm-hmm. I think like, I think he's is. he's probably the next hundred million dollar guard. I mean, if Robert Hunt and Landon Dickerson are making some of the money, like he he's going to demand a hundred million dollars, twenty five a year type of guy. Yeah, yeah rightfully so. I mean, six round pick. Right, six round pick and has been starting since day one. He'll get, he'll absolutely get paid. Also, what's what's just incredible is how great you don't have to be perfect for quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes. You can, we, I mean, how many different times, yeah. even than just these five or six plays, did mostly one of the tackles get beat? Here's a swim move here, there, but it's okay. Like as long as as long as four guys win their block or the two interior guys. <laughs> Mahomes knows how to take a step forward. How to exactly, and that was the old thought process. Pocket. Was that the tackles could allow the defensive ends to rush as far as they wanted up the field, as long as the interior didn't give up any ground. Then the quarterback could go back, set everybody to want to rush him, and then as mm-hmm. soon as the lines were set, he would start to step up so that they would be off target and the tackles would just run him by. It's the old Saints, and that's how Drew Brees threw for fucking five thousand yards a year because nobody could go after him because he had the most stout interior and the tackles were just running dudes by. And he would just huck that ball downfield, dude. It's it's a great it's a great way to approach the offensive line because it is so hard to find a great right tackle and a good left tackle. That a lot of times I feel like if people would just go after great guards or find better center play, the tackles will come. But dude, to find a good one, it's very hard. Yeah. Guards matter. Guards yeah, matter. Yeah, they do. Guards lives matter. <laughs> we Guards do matter. matter. We care, man. <laughs> oh man. All right, that's it. Alex Boone, Jeremiah Cyril's little love to the uh, Kansas City Chiefs interior offensive line here on this O-line committee film breakdown. See you next time.